Namaste. Welcome everyone to this uh, Ask Me Anything uh, section, volume nine, I think now. Um, before I get into the questions and the comments that have been sent in this time, just want to let you know that the next one of these won't be uh, released ready till the end of October because um, we're heading to uh, the US for the retreat. So anything that you want to ask me or uh, share or comment on, feel free to leave it as a comment underneath this video. And then when I do the next one, uh, I'll address that. So let's get to the things that have been sent in this time. So uh, the first one is from Yoga with Helen. And it says, uh, going to the left, hate of the living. Is that satsang? Many monk have gone to Yama, Buddha, left Trinity, and think they are not ego, no ego, sorry, Buddha, when they are left. Many become monsters like Yama on the temple wall, keep to the middle path of non-ego. So um, <clears throat> when this comment came in a few weeks ago, I asked you to uh, expand upon and clarify what you meant by this, and we haven't had any further comment in. So it's not a comment that I can decipher what you're saying. I can only comment on it to say uh, there is no middle path in non-duality. There is just the self. So these ideas of... Uh, no people knowing that they're no ego or uh, all of that if someone knows that they don't have an ego they're very most most likely do have an ego and i can only assume that that's what you're saying uh here but i don't know if you want to write in and make that clearer then you're more than welcome and i'll look at it next month so uh moja murphy says um to the lady dealing with herself about her estranged daughter i have the same scenario but my, with my adult son, <clears throat> he pushed me out of his life and I have no clue why. He also had uh, my first grandchild. It's been probably over three years now and I still fluctuate from anger to sadness to now finally getting used to not talking to him. I'm trying to see my way to loving acceptance, but sometimes some part of me is still so angry. And just now writing this, I realize the depth of the anger is the depth of the hurt. <clears throat> it has made me also dig deeper into who or what I am. Thanks for writing your question for all of us going through this. I hope you are well. And can I say I love you and your hurt and healing self too. <clears throat> so, um, Moja, you know, it's um, you sent in things before and they're always beautiful. And this is no different. Uh, in case anyone is wondering, this is in response to a question I was asked and answered last time about um, a lady who was dealing with uh, challenges in a relationship with her daughter. And um, as you said here, uh, it's it, because there's only one of us, we, we might think that we're asking our question, we get an answer, and um, the answer only applies to the person that sent the question in. But it's not really like that, is it? In reality, there's only one being. So in each question, there's something for me in each question for me to look at. And there's something for everyone in every answer that comes. Uh, so th there's something for all of us in each question and answer because it's in us somewhere, some kind of deep hurt. And to answer what you've said, you know, maybe uh, these years have passed since this happened for you and not only now can you actually begin to look at the depth of the hurt and the anger around it. Maybe when it first happened, um, you couldn't look at it fully because it was too raw, too fresh and all of that. So maybe now you're starting to realize the depth of the emotion behind it. That's not a bad thing. That's uh, a self-protecting mechanism that our egos have. And the fact that it's beginning to calm down now is key. Uh, from my perspective that you're starting to really see there might be more to this than I've realized uh, and you've done everything right of course you've used it to fuel your awakening and you're being it sounds like you're being gentle with yourself so that's really good um, you're also appearing as a human being to a mother aren't you so uh, just keep uh, gently looking at it and staying open to as you've seen there might be more to see about it that is really how the self would be with it, isn't it? 
So well done. Thanks for sharing your experience too. Uh, Nishi says, thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. Uh, Rakesh says, uh, question, uh, we often feel confident or not confident carrying out a particular task at work or socially. It feels like the confidence stems from a false sense of me. Is it okay to feel confident about your capabilities while trying to just be devoid of characteristics or trying to just be in capital letters, Akesh has put here, uh, devoid of characteristics? So I would say, you know, to question the idea that you've put there that does that confidence necessarily come from an ego or a separate sense of self, if it doesn't really exist anyway, if it's just a thought constructed idea that we have about ourselves, then does it really um, <clears throat> have any say over our actions anyway? And um, when we come to look at it like this, we might begin to realize that confidence has always come from the self. It's always come from who we really are, our infinite nature. But um, to answer the question, Perhaps don't try to be devoid of characteristics because you're appearing as a human being. You're appearing as uh, Rakesh and all that you do and your body does and your mind does and all of that. Maybe what you meant was not taking ownership of those characteristics. They're just what's showing up in your body and mind. And yet it's absolutely okay to feel confident. There's a sense of... Um, self-assuredness perhaps self-confidence uh, that comes self-esteem that comes as you begin to realize deeper and deeper what you really are because that has a certain um <clears throat> depth of confidence and security and uh, love and understanding that comes with that so you know just considering the fact maybe where you felt confident doing things in the past might have already been the self shining through this uh, persona, this separate sense of self that we thought we were anyway. Something to think about there, good question. Uh, Laurie says, wonderful, thank you, Helen, thank you. Sandy says, so helpful, I hope you can feel from me how much, thank you, Helen, I absolutely can, thank you, Sandy. Uh, Gabrielle says, so much love for you, Helen, I keep smiling, um, feeling deep appreciation while listening to you, what a joy we are. Thank you. Appreciate that. And yes, we really are, aren't we? Uh, Beth sent a love heart. Good to see you, Beth. <clears throat> so Naja S says, uh, hi, Helen. I asked you the question about fulfilling my desires last time. I did as you asked, trying to examine my discontent and maintain overall positive feelings. In the beginning, it worked great. I tuned into the feelings of peace, groundedness and potential. I was happy and full of energy. I had new ideas. People around me were happy. Then after about a week, I started noticing some small discontent pinchings, like I wanted to get angry about things or some kind of irritation at first. I was aware of them and let them pass, trying to maintain my positive outlook. However, the weekend came and it was cold and cloudy and I was still aware of my inner state. But at one point, the anxiety, uh, demotivation, overall lowness took over completely. I was still saying to myself that I'll stay positive and I will not engage with them. I felt really bad uh, being, uh, being even surprised that this being lives within me. And finally, just decided to surrender and simply not think about, think out of this state. Did I do right? Thank you for your guidance. Absolutely, uh, Naji, you've done perfectly there. Uh, and what's happening here is not something going wrong. As we, I think we may have talked about last time, when you want something and you begin to put attention on that and um, get clear on what you want, it's going to start to come into manifestation. And our desires are at first in thought form, so ideas that we have, and then they've got to move into an emotional form. So here is where we'll find, um, we'll become aware of the emotions that are negative emotions that are holding back this manifestation because it's first mental, emotional, and then physical. Really, they're all happening at the same time, but 
so this anger this irritation um and that sort of deepened into a cloud of negativity is uh showing you that there's an idea in the way of what you uh, want to show up so anger irritation is like a sense of feeling blocked isn't it from what you want so I'm thinking about what I want and then it seems to be that someone in my outside world or something is blocking me from having what I want and that's where this irritation comes up this anger so when you notice that do your best to be with it as you did surrender stop trying to change it you did that perfectly stop trying to suppress the emotion it's coming up now as a way to release it it's really good that it's coming up it feels terrible but it's really good that it's coming up and maybe you can see that it came up um after a few days because this is the thing that now needs resolving for these things to show up so i'd suggest using a contemplation technique uh, and on the, my youtube channel there's a playlist core teachings in that there's a contemplation video if you haven't seen it already uh, give it a watch and you can use the emotion the negative emotion and ask that emotion what it's telling you so irritation frustration anger they're all a sense they're coming from a sense of feeling i'm blocked i can't get what i want i'm limited in my um ability here i'm disempowered can you feel that sense that's coming from that Something or someone can stop me from getting what I want. And we know ultimately that can't be true because there's only the one being. So I suggest sitting with this feeling and just asking it what it's what it believes because each emotion is showing a negative belief uh, that we're holding on to. And the reason it's showing up in emotion is because we don't know it's there in the belief. We don't know we're still believing that. It's been there for so long. So once you get the sense uh, of belief, it probably says something like, uh, anger says, I've, I'm blocked, It's uh, I'm stuck, I can't get what I want. You can ask if that's true then. It feels true as a separate being. And there's something or someone that can stop me getting what I want or I can stop me getting what I want uh, through resistance or something. But then if uh, we look even deeper, is that really true now? From what you're seeing yourself to be the real infinite self where there isn't any other thing or person other than you it's just you everywhere this is you talking to you right now so have a look at that and most of all uh see if you can hold this like you've done here you've done brilliantly that this isn't something going wrong this is just life showing you now what needs to be released in order to allow this manifestation to come from emotional then into physicality, into something tangible we can see and experience with our senses. So you're right on track. You did the best thing possible. I couldn't have asked for anything different. Just now taking it this extra step, you might notice fear come up at some point too. Fear says, I'm not safe. I'm in danger. Unworthiness. I don't really deserve what I'm asking for says this old egoic belief, doesn't it? So I had to work through all that myself too. So, okay. Uh, Higgs uh, Boson says, <clears throat> uh, Dear Helen, I'm still remembering your instruction to zoom out and be aware of space. You've said that recognizing space is fundamental to our awakening, our realization. I wish to know if you acknowledge the Arupa Loka, the immaterial realm in which infinite space is one of four characteristics. So first, the uh, immaterial world, neither perception nor non-perception. The inhabitants of these realms are possessed entirely of mind, having no physical body. They are unable to hear Dharma teachings. Uh, the nothingness, the third formless jnana, uh, infinite consciousness, formless jnana, an infinite space, the first, sorry, third, second and first. So if we get into different realms and different lokas, uh, the word loka, if, if people listen to this and not really sure, it's just a term for uh, dimension realm. It's um, on the gradual path towards enlightenment, there are uh, many locus or realms uh, of course we we live in one kind of physical realm we also have an emotional realm 
we have a realm of thoughts, don't we? Um, and a realm of energy and all of that getting progressively more subtle. And I don't think, I'm not saying I disagree with these, but I don't think they're helpful uh, to focus on in terms of um, right now working towards the realization of the one being. That's just my own perspective. I have followed teachers before who um, very much do follow that um, gradual path, but I found that it kind of led to no ending for me. My ego used it as a way to continue seeking. So non-duality is literally meaning not two, only one. So if we're dividing that oneness into four, we've kind of lost the non-duality of it. And I know that certain paths suit certain beings uh, better than others, but here in this path, it's it's a very direct teaching. And I know that only in the end, that direct teaching got me to some kind of end point with it. So I hope that helps to answer your question. So that's not to say that I haven't experienced those uh, some of those dimensions. It's not to say they don't exist. I just found that um, a cul-de-sac that I went down in my awakening and got very, very fascinated with different realms, some of them pleasant, some unpleasant, all of that. Um, and different uh, pathways call them different things. Uh, some are very beautiful, some not. But for the sake of freedom, for the sake of ending suffering, I didn't find them uh, helpful. Uh, I found focusing only on and relentlessly on what I really am. And then later, you know, we can maybe explore those kind of things once we've stopped suffering, once we're free of mind and illusion. So I hope that helps. Uh, Gabrielle has asked, uh, Dear Helen, is it helpful to use thoughts or emotions as an aid to search for a separate being? Asking questions such as, is there someone thinking this thought? Is there someone feeling this emotion? And while at work, uh, having a meeting or something, could I do this scan while talking or listening to people? Thank you for everything. Yeah, absolutely, whichever way works for you. I mean, we do self-inquiry. We sit and look for a separate being in a very general way. But then we can also, as you said, next time, so I'm clear there isn't a separate being and I go about my day, go to work, somebody says something to me and there's this big flare of anger and it might be really helpful to say then who's who's feeling this anger who's resisting this who's um wanting to be right is there a separate being so and that's to me a really good way to use the phenomena we're not at war with thoughts and emotions we're not at war with sense perception all of that is here for a reason and if we're using those phenomena like thoughts to point us back to the formless noumenon that isn't a thing that we really are then uh, we'll find that those thoughts begin to diminish anyway because we're using them in the best way possible we're using them up so um absolutely it's like in the moment as i go self-inquiry isn't it and it <laughs> very literally <laughs> saved my life a couple of times because you know you can feel this kind of uh emotional overwhelm coming up sort of asking who's overwhelmed by this emotion or who is it that's resisting self-inquiry even very very good question so yeah absolutely um <clears throat> christina um i know you have a question here i'll answer it in a moment just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to do uh the you've indexed the the time stamps for the questions that we did last time so thank you very much i appreciate that uh great time saving uh, for everyone. So, um, Christina, your question is, uh, dear Helen, thanks for all your support in awakening. Um, <clears throat> question about finding my own guidance. Some years ago, I lost my job in the pharma or um, IT industry, and I cannot see myself going back to that industry, but my money is running out and I've been waiting for some inner guidance about my next move but it does not seem to come. How would you advise me to feel abundant and being loved when not seeing this in my outer world? Can you give some encouragement, please? And finally, what do you think of energy clearing and muscle testing as a help in finding truth and direction? Or does it just come? Thank you. Uh, you are such a love. Thank you for your kind words. 
Um, I would say that it is happening in your outside world, but perhaps it's subtle. So we haven't actually noticed it as yet. I would start with feelings. <clears throat> so how do I begin to feel more abundant when my outer world is really saying, seems to be saying I don't have enough of something? How do we go about that? Well, can you notice uh, now the certain things that make you feel more joyful? So abundance is uh, a general state of being. And of course, we only re tend to refer it to, to finance, to money. But abundance of peace, clarity, love, joy, energy, well-being, happiness, and then in an outer way as well of <clears throat> um, money, having enough time, having the right connections, having everything we need in an outer way. So abundance to me is um, not a stockpile of something. It's being so open energetically that I can never run out of what I need. It might seem to get low and close to running out, but never actually running out. So can you look for the inner abundance that's already here? And there's no more abundance uh, nothing greater in terms of abundance than the infinite nature of your real self. As you focus on what you really are, you're infinite and formless and everywhere, and you are the source from which this money that you're wanting is going to come from. So first of all, disentangling the finance from work. We've been taught this idea that I work so many hours a day and I get this much money for it. And that's okay as a separate being, but as the self, it won't really allow abundance to come in. <clears throat> so can you um, begin to uh, connect in your mind abundance with how I'm feeling, outer abundance with how I'm feeling? So if I recognize inner abundance of how I want to feel, then that will translate as outer abundance, reflect as has to, because our outside world is a reflection of what's going on inside in our thoughts and emotions. And it cannot be any other way. So firstly, what are you already feeling abundant in? Do you have more peace than you had last year? Do you have moments of joy? Do you have um, moments of happiness? Do you feel every now and again that you're experiencing a deeper silence of your being? Uh, so looking at all the ways, asking this question, how is abundance already happening to me? And I might not have noticed was hugely uh, beneficial for me because if I'm looking at my outer world and, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm looking at my outer world and uh, saying that what I want is not here, then I'm actually not allowed, it cannot show up then. So if my focus is on, because literally by my infinite command, I'm saying it is not here. <clears throat> so if we can then um, bring attention to how it is already showing up for me. And it will be happening already in a, a, a thousand tiny little ways. So I found it really helpful here. I might have talked about it before, but to keep um, a miracle journal and <clears throat> looking for the a determined effort to make uh, to make a determined effort to keep a record of the little tiny miracles that were beginning to happen as I uh, began to look at allowing in more outer abundance as well. So firstly, what is your inner abundance? What is that? Where is that coming from? There can't be any lack if you are the infinite supply. You don't have infinite supply. You are infinite supply as the self and then <clears throat> consider starting a miracle journal and it can be tiny little things like um the the thing i had to buy today at the shop was on offer two for the price of one that's a financial miracle right there because we were going to have to spend money on it anyway when life has given us two for one or three for two or whatever happened most people would just put them in there uh, trolley and say you know great I got that but they wouldn't really see it as a financial miracle or you know we're walking along and we find a coin on the street and it doesn't seem to belong to anyone else there's a financial miracle right there or um, you put on an old pair of jeans and find a note 
stuffed in a pocket that you didn't know was in there or down the back of the sofa. There's a financial miracle right there. And if we're not treating these as manifestations of what we want, if we're just looking at them as, okay, that just happened, it was just a chance, then we're missing out on a golden opportunity because you start to notice these little ones and document them. After a week or two, you've got pages and pages and pages of evidence that life is beginning to look after you. Life is beginning to, it's always been trying to, of course, because it's a friendly universe, but our thoughts are um, making us experience otherwise. And this main thought is, that's that's the challenge here, is that it's not already happening for me. Um, so, you know, look at, and not just financial miracles, start to record everyone that you can see. You know, somebody apologized to me today rather than, you know, I was not speaking for two days. Somebody apologized, or I was able to apologize easier to someone else, or things that our mind would just dismiss. And when I started this, I ended up with a whole uh, journal full of evidence that things were really actually going my way. And throughout as the day has progressed, these miracles are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, one, one miracle was, you know, I've actually got some money left at the end of the month. That, my mind would say, was uh, just few, you know, you made it. But I wanted to celebrate that because that's a, a miracle. Um, <clears throat> so accepting the fact that if if you are the infinite being it must already be showing up in the outer way but are we noticing that it's like planting seeds that you want to grow and flower and sprout and um expecting them to sort of flourish without any water so we've got to look after those seeds we've got to water them and nourish them and then they grow into these big oak trees that you know give uh, rise to all these other seeds well any type of tree but you you get the uh, metaphor so to have a go with that and within a few days you will feel so different you'll start to see that life is actually working with you abundance is already there you can just soften our energy with it and allow it to come in uh, ever more delightful ways so hope that helps it's absolutely natural that you don't want to go back to that industry too i have nothing against that industry um, but you've been there, done that, and now you want something more in line with who you are now, perhaps. And uh, as you focus on the inner abundance of fun and joy and you unhook money from work, money is a direct reflection of our inner state of consciousness only. Never, ever to do with what our body is doing throughout the day that we call work. Seems to be, of course. Then as the abundance of joy begins to come and well-being and a feeling of security and being looked after, Life has to give us something for our body to do that reflects that too, that feels just as good. So it's exciting. Uh, and finally, one love Henry one says, um, hi, Helen, as always, thank you for the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, how do you experience a visual field after enlightenment? Do other enlightened beings appear any different from non-enlightened beings? Can you see or sense another being's blockages is the reality of reality seen as energetic flow? Thank you for sharing. Much love. Well, wow, that's a big question. <laughs> so I want to, before I answer this, I want to say that um, my answer to this would be different to any other awakened being. It's kind of hilarious to say, really, because there's only one of us. But I was, right from an early age, the first thing I remember really in this lifetime was seeing energy, seeing auras, seeing things like that. So what I see now is going to be different probably to any awakened being. Um, <clears throat> sometimes awakening will come with this kind of thing. Sometimes you've had it from uh, an early age. Awakening itself doesn't necessarily change what you see, perceive through your senses. Um, so I'll tell you my experience, but don't think that that's one that every awakened being should have because I got caught up in that too. Um, you know, this, this awakened being can travel to other dimensions. Why can't I do that too? You know, all that kind of stuff. How it awa awakening expresses itself in each being is going to be unique. So, uh, for me, just starting with the visual field, the actual senses, 
as awakening deepened there was a real uh, everything still looks the same in terms of what my eyes are seeing but there's a richness a vibrancy and a liveness a real uh, a realness to it colors sometimes uh can be extraordinarily intense um so if i'm walking or driving along and there's uh, trees and grass it can be almost illuminous it looks illuminous like um really really totally vibrant still the same green but it's like the filter that's uh, diminishing our usual experience is gone and smells and tastes can be very intense and very um like, delicious you know uh i often joke about the first time i ate some chocolate after i'd really broken through and it was yeah that's the whole conversation so those the everybody gets a basic kind of upgrade to the senses things don't look different they just look more intense more real i, I can't really find a more vibrant perhaps um in the sense that we're really seeing them for the first time that becomes a permanent thing so everything i'm experiencing i haven't really experienced it before it's new it's fresh it's alive <clears throat> in terms of seeing energy and blockages uh yeah that's that's something that's happened for me uh all seeing the energetic field if you want uh to use that word as well as the physical field that's just been something that's always been there for me i don't know why maybe i worked on it before in a previous body who knows but um that that's something that's always been there for me it wasn't particularly something that came with awakening perhaps i stopped blocking it or resisting it trying to get rid of it with awakening because as a as a child um it became very clear to me that <laughs> nobody else was seeing that kind of stuff or they weren't mentioning it anyway so <clears throat> I, it uh, was something that I really pushed away for such a long time. And as a teenager, I didn't want any of that. I didn't want to be different. I wanted to fit in, of course, like we all do or did. So um, I think awakening has given me a deeper appreciation for that and a recognition of why that is here. It helps me to uh, see when someone's resisting, even if they're not saying something or if someone's not really telling me the truth even if they don't realize it it's kind of clearer for me uh, and sometimes it helps to be able to see <clears throat> where those blockages are because then um it helps me to direct where the teaching wants to go with it where the advice wants to go so as i said just just that kind of caveat on it that's my experience it's not every awakened being's experience um there are also unawakened beings, yogis that have meditated for years that can see stuff like that. The cities, they're called, um, that come at a certain point in our evolution. But that's not the same as uh, awakening. So it's just important to clear that up. But, you know, if you have more questions about that, please do ask. Your questions are always insightful anyway and wonderful. So. Okay, so that's it for today. So just a quick reminder um, that the next one won't be till the end of October because we're away, we're traveling on retreats in the US. And um, a thank you to everyone that sent something in. And uh, I hope these are helpful. I hope these are fun for you guys to watch as well. And um, as it says, there's nothing that you can't ask me um, that's helpful to your awakening. So I will see you next time. Thank you.